Okay, good morning. It's a beautiful morning. The sun is just coming up over Queens right now. Brooklyn's, Queens, kind of that area over there. Anyway, we are getting underway. Hey, I got a fixed line over here. Uh, put your mind. Came off the, uh, hey, thank you. Very good. Let me know when you get it in. I'll go work back into it. So, uh, yeah. We're in a dock where we normally, everyone drives in here putting the bow up against the bulkhead. And today, we find that whoever dropped it off put it in what we call backwards. In other words, the bow facing out. Which, it, which isn't the end of the world, it just makes it for a little different. So, what you're going to see is us made up alongside the barge. And uh, being that the barge isn't that... Heavy lo okay. Heavily loaded. It's going to work fine. Okay, you all set? It says the uh, line that you're fishing one. It's like the one to get off. So that's okay, so, uh, yeah, I, I just want to all stop. Does that help? Okay. All right, so uh, I just want to all stop, take some tension off the lines. And uh, they're doing their thing. You can see that big ship that's going by us there that was kind of holding us up before. Okay, Cap. Well, we're taking one. Uh, taking in. Very good. Take him in. Take him in. <laughs> Okay, so before I leave, since I can't see around the corner, I just look over here. I see a big ship coming around the corner there, but should be able to get out of the slip before that happens. Alright, let me know if we start coming off. Yeah, we're touching gently on the uh, pedal here, on the uh, working valve. Uh, we're uh, closing it right now. Touching gently on the uh, water pedal over here. All right, closing in. How many feet is that? Uh, your your uh, turn's actually opening up to uh, three right now. All right, we still up against on that one right by your foot. Yep. All right. Is it looking all right or putting a lot of pressure on it? No, you're touching gently. You're starting to open up right now. to one. Okay, very good. We'll call it uh, zero six ten underway. Okay. All right. So I want to roll Bye. roll around Bye. here real Bye. tight so that I don't get tangled up with this ship that's coming around the corner. All right, Dorn, I should have it from here. Thank you. Okay. Security call, Tug Elk River is underway from Buckeye, Bayonne. Uh, we'll be westbound on the kills, bound up for, for shipside 58. Okay, there's this other ship coming. I'm going to try to reach out to him. Suvreta, the eastbound ship there from the Elk River. Yeah, Elk River, come in. Hey, Cap, I'd like to hang out right in back of that uh, 
the Brigitte there, but if you want, I can hold her up on this side of the eight and wait for you. I'm out of my slip facing you right now, but uh, like I say, if you want, I can hold up on this end. Oh, that's okay. Keep it coming. Oh, you're the man. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, no, uh, six, six ten underway. Six ten. Six ten. Okay, hold on. All right. So, if you see the big orange ship, and then there's a red, there's a red buoy right there, and uh, that's the eight buoy. So some pilots get nervous, and they don't want to go around that buoy while they're coming around the other way and they ask you to hold up. So I was preparing for that, and uh, this pilot seems to be great, where he's like, yeah, come on, bring her on. So we're gonna try to get on the other side of that buoy, then I can squish up to the dock and give him some more room. Doran, because we're made up alongside, don't transition onto the boat without telling me before you do that, all right? So I make sure that I keep the, keep that I don't make any changes in the rudder. So when we're made up alongside, the boat moves back and forth a little bit, and so uh, unlike being in the notch with push gear where you're kind of static, you know, made as one piece to the barge, uh, I uh, am concerned sometimes when my deckhands jump between the barge and the boat because they might be doing that just as I'm putting rudder uh, movement in and it, the barge, the the two might move back and forth, and uh, I would hate to have somebody get hurt in between, so I like them to let me know what they're doing before they do it. All right, so we're getting some way on here now. Come around the eight buoy, and like I say, that pilot was good to us, so we're going to be good to him by giving him plenty of room over here. Uh, I'm going way too fast because the ship ahead of me is doing four knots, and we're almost doing twice that. As soon as I get around this buoy, now I can start pulling it back right now so that uh, I don't go flying up on the ship anymore. I just wanted to take care of that pilot that was taking care of us. It sounds odd, but one hey, of the... Hey, Cap, let me know if it's safe to get on the boat. Yes, sir, this is a great time right now. Let me check in with traffic. Traffic from the Elk River. We are underway at this time. Roger that. Just talk about that uh, tanker off your bow, starting into the Captain D. The next unit is a CMA CTM. Very good. Good copy and all. Thank you. All right. So that was VTS, Vessel Traffic Services. They kind of uh, control us. And if you're interested in that, I made a video a while ago that uh, I really expected more people to see. It, uh, it, it was a unique opportunity for me where I got to go and hang out with the people at VTS and we had to get special waivers to allow us to film in a military facility and uh, got all that. And anyway, if I do my homework, I probably won't do this because I always forget, but maybe I'll put a link up here that you can click on to the VTS video. Or you can just look, or you can just look for a video entitled VTS. <laughs> But I highly recommend that you check it out. The folks at VTS do a great job, and uh, it was a fun day hanging out with them. And uh, it's something that you don't usually get to see. Um, like I say, I'd, I'd, I've been doing this for over 20 years, and I don't know any other person other than myself that's able was able to get there and see VTS. So now you can. <laughs> Okay, so we just have some uh, traffic here. As you can see, I'm trying to go very slow because the ship ahead of me is going slow. We've got a little uh, municipal waste barge. You can see there's a barge on the left-hand side here with the green containers on it. You don't see a 
tugboat, and that's because those guys that run the tugboat are on the other side. They don't even have an upper house. So they're going on their instruments, and they have a deckhand that hangs out on their port side that just watches for everybody and tells the operator what's going on. Then we have another inbound ship coming up here. So we're going to be in a little holding pattern, running slow here for quite a while. So I'm going to shut the shut everything down and start it up when we get to the other side and you're going to see us go along don't don't shut the video off because there's something interesting sometimes I always complain about big ships well sometimes little ships are even harder than big ships we're going up against a very small ship and uh, it, it makes it for a very I don't want to say difficult job it's just that the barge is almost as big as the ship is so it's hard to find a good place to tie it up so hopefully, if you stick around, you'll see that. All right, we're out of here. Okay, welcome back. We're coming down the uh, Port Elizabeth Channel here, and we passed a bunch of ships on the left. We got a couple ships on the right. That little ship there, all the way at the end on the left-hand side, is uh, the one we're going to, and we have to spin around to get to it. And if you remember, in other videos, I've talked about. The weight of a tugboat that we'll call, we call for lack of a better term, we call it ass, how much ass the boat has. So if you look at our 4200s, they have a considerable amount more ass than the 3000s do, like this boat. But the weight to horsepower is about the same and maybe even better on a 3000. But the difference is in what we call the ass. That's where it, it hold, it, the, the, the difference between the weight of you and what you're pushing or towing is you know uh, much greater when you have a heavier tug so so for instance hang on I think my deckhand's talking to me Doran are you talking to me okay very good there's some other people on our channel very good so uh, so with a 4200 looking at this ship up here I would come in just like we're coming in right now and put the stern of the of the tug and rotate clockwise right around and the reason why I would do that on a 4200 and not a 3000 is a 4200 has enough ass to hold the barge there and spin the barge right around to the ship but if I did that with the with the 3000 what is more likely to happen is that the bow of the barge would stay wherever I put it and the rear end of the barge or the where the tug is would be the only thing that would move so in that case, I'm going to come right and make a counterclockwise turn, or as some of you people say, anti-clockwise turn, around to land on the ship. And the reason, the reason why I thought that you guys might want to see this is that as you start to see how small this little ship is, this little ship is something that goes back and forth between the islands. I think it goes to the Bahamas. It might go to Bermuda. I'm not really sure. It's, uh, it goes to somewhere in the islands, but it's on a regular schedule and it goes back and forth all the time. But it's so small that landing the barge on the flat of the ship is a very difficult thing to do because the, you'll see that the barge is almost as big as the ship. So we're doing 7.6. We're getting closer here. I think I'll start uh, taking my throttles off of sync. Start pulling, bleeding off a little bit of power. And all the time trying to gain more room on the right hand side so that I can make this turn like that. Doran, make sure they put the fenders down, okay? Yeah, it's turning on the hydraulics right now. All right, cool. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so we're down to 6.5 now. A little bit further and I'll start making my turn. <clears throat> now 
that says BCL on it. I wonder if that's Bahamian container line. I don't know if it is or not, but it sure Dorn, sounds good. Doran, how's my stern looking? Am I getting too close on my stern the other way? There you go. Uh, you're about, uh, you're about 40 wide on the uh, Martin ship. Thank you on the door. You're doing three or four. Oh, wow, 40 wide. All right, cool. Look like that's up against it over here. Cool. Uh, 25, 20, 20. Uh, All right, now we're coming into the rake of the ship on the starboard side, so I can really crank this thing over. I was worried that if I got too close to the Maersk ship that my ass would hit it as I swung around. Okay, so I'm hard left. I'm doing a left twist counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. You can see my red line on the plotter is still going straight down the channel, which is just what we want to see. I'm a little concerned of it, that if it, keep, if it starts to move ahead too much, um, I might run out of room pretty quickly, so I need to back harder if that happens. Things are going well, so I'm just going to slow the twist down just to bleed off a little energy. Keep things from rattling too much. So when you're made up alongside a barge like this, some, it's usually easier to push to, towards the barge than to pull away from it. Very good, thank you. And what happens is the water that's on the the water that's coming to the propeller sometimes gets blocked by the by the. Uh, barge, especially if it's a loaded barge. So sometimes it's much easier to push towards it than pull away from it. So all of this is going to work well for us. So now as we're going right here, we're a good ways off. I'm going to stop with my uh, backing engine and just clutch ahead on two with the rudder hard over to port. And this will put us closer to the ship but also keep continue our turn. Unfortunately, the radios are real busy. All right. Yeah. Everybody's bleeding over on the radios this morning. Enough to drive a man crazy. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to go all stop on my starboard engine because I'm concerned that, uh, and in fact, I'm going to straighten my rudder out so that we don't pull the bow off too much. I want to get further, closer to the ship. So now my rudder's straight ahead. Just working on my outboard engine, that's almost going to stop the rotation, but what it's going to do is start to close the distance between the corner, the corner of the bow to the ship. Very good. Okay, so now I'm just going to go all stop, let it close in. We went from 70 to 60, so it's working. I've got my uh, rudder hard over to, over to port again, so that I'm ready to, to sneak the... the Pull the bow out and pull, pull the stern over. So we went from 70 to 60 to 40 now. So I'm going to start 30 and closing. I'm going to start backing. I don't have to lift the bow because I'm made up alongside. As I start backing here, that's going to naturally pull the bow out. So that just slows it down a little bit. The bow's coming out a little bit. In fact, he might, he may even be gaining over there. So now, still holding 30. Beautiful. We didn't, we didn't pull it out too much. So now I'm going to do, I'm basically going to walk the barge over. But because of this, it's going to not really walk. I'm pushing more energy on the stern, and we're going to start coming along flat alongside the ship. So, but if you're wondering how I do this, it's, the throttles are set up to do a right twist. But the, the rudder is set up to do a left twist. And by doing this, you push the stern over and hopefully hold the bow there. 
So the bow is going to open up a little bit. As I ease my rudder, we can keep the bow from opening up anymore. I'm going to bring it down to like 40 degrees. And now we're sliding sideways towards the ship and everything's looking good. Now I'm going to go all stop and let everything settle down because we don't see anybody on the ship yet. Doran, you haven't seen anybody yet, right? Nope, I'm uh, working. Uh, not really seeing any uh, such a lot. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to give him a two. Okay. They're probably in there having their breakfast. So, Doran, because of the size of the ship, it's really imperative that you land me on uh, on rubber because I think only the middle rubber is really going to catch. Um, I don't know if the ship is big enough to catch all the all the Yokohamas. I think this is a good spot right here to, to land on, and uh, you know we'll have uh, still touch on rubber. Yeah, Roger that. So we'll. We'll do this. Oh, we see a man out here now. Yep. All right. Good thing about a small ship. Going by the pressure points on the ship. All right. Playing flat, 25 right now, closing. Okay, so we're closing all the time. He says we're flat, but it looks to me like the stern might be in a little bit more. So I'm putting my rudder amidship just to make sure that we have a problem. I can change things around if I have to. Okay, now the bow's stalled out, so I'm going to start slowing down the stern and bringing hey, uh, it out. Uh, we got to go back about 100 feet. That's where the uh, you know, connection is. Right on the okay, very good. Coming back 100 feet. Okay. Okay, now the problem with this is that as we come back, because we're made up alongside, it's going to want to turn to the starboard. So I actually have to give a little bit of uh, starboard wheel and a head on my port engine to keep us from rotating. That's going to actually pull us off the ship, which isn't something I want to do. I'm going to go all stop. But, uh, we're, uh, playing flat right now, at 20 wide, now. All right. But since we have to come back so much, we'll probably just come back nice and easy, and when we have to, we'll, uh, walk it back over there again. Okay, so now I see the engineer is on the back of the ship, and I oh, see the connection back right here. Now. So you're going to see most of us is going to be hang Ready? most of the barge is going to be hanging off this little teeny ship. Okay, I would say that we probably have about 40 or 50 more feet to go. So what I'm going to do is start, as we're, we're making a knot backwards, I'm going to start to set my rudder the other way so that we'll start our walk in towards the ship while we're backing up. This doesn't always work, but I think today, without any wind and the conditions are right, we might be able to make this happen. Now I look at my red... Oh, very good. Now I can look at my red line, and my red line is just showing us going straight back. It's not showing us moving over. Okay, now the red line is pointing towards the ship, so now it's really starting to work. So everything we want to happen is happening. I think we still need to come back a little bit more. Okay, he probably wants us back another 40 or 50 feet. Is that about right? Okay. Oh wow, okay. 
Okay, come ahead now, he says. So now, because I'm by, there's the danger of the rake of the ship over here. Okay, I need to touch up with the bow first, because I don't want to go into the rake back here. Are we good on the, are we going to touch with the bow first? Yep. Okay. Keep that, uh, Okay, very good. Yeah, once it bounces, I'll go straight ahead. Okay. So now I'm just being wary of not getting rolled underneath that rake. So everything's looking good. So we should touch up right about now. Okay, and we'll slide ahead uh, 30 or 40 feet. There's the bounce. Coming ahead, everything's looking good. 20 feet. 40 feet. 20, 20, 20 feet. Yeah, we're coming ahead at a good clip, so I just take bumping one in gear. Push you over. <laughs> it's kind of funny on a ship this size where he can just pass the line <laughs> over to the guy. Doesn't seem right. Right in the log. All right. Now I'm just twisting against their line to get the stern back over without trying to drive mess up the spot so everything's looking good all right they're tightening up the line there and we're just about back where we need to be everything's looking good so now's a good time while they're figuring out the rest of the spot I can check out with traffic Traffic from the Elk River. Elk River traffic. Elk River here. We're sh uh, shipside at 58. You can check me out. Thank you so much. Check out and have a good day. You too. All right. Doran, is this something I can do to help? Or are you good? I see him struggling with the line. Uh, oh. Okay, very good. Give me a thumbs up so he's all good. So what you can't see over here is the tankerman and the chief engineer on the ship are uh, tying up and preparing to do their transfer of oil over here. And uh, this is one of those barges we always like moving, not because the barge is good. In fact, I don't like this barge that much at all. But we love moving it because the tankerman on... Both the, the, both of the tankermen on here are extremely experienced and very good at what they do. And because of that, they always make our job very, so much easier. So that's about it. Everybody always says, oh, I'd like to see the whole breakdown operation. 
really isn't much to see. It's just a lot of dead air. So that's it. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a special thing of just us breaking down one day. But anyway, for now, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Maybe you smash that like button. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, it's a real quick and easy, cheap way to uh, support the channel. And uh, really appreciate it. Big shout out to the patrons out there. They're the people that pay the bills for everyone else and help the channel continue to grow. And always be safe and see you guys on the one.